Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Welcome Baba back, boy. everybody. This this is nice, uh, upsetting scene we come back to with uh, our good wanderer friend who has just uh, made a deal to purchase that long horse off you in exchange for a foot has uh, come in here and shown you his friend who stubbed his toe real bad and ne needs to rest it off. Thankfully, they're going to have transport to get out of here so he doesn't have to work that Aww. poor stubbed toe of his. Jeremy! He's going for so, the hug again. Argo, as you call out to Jeremy, he slowly turns his neck towards you as much as he can muster, which isn't a whole lot. And you see a postule burst beneath his eye as that black fluid runs out of it, almost like, like tears. Uh, holds you back by the shoulder. <laughs> Shakes head. Do we have germ theory? <laughs> I, I don't think you do at this point. <laughs> back We're still on, uh, going on that medieval French theory of if it smells bad, it makes you sick. Well, does he so smell bad? Smells bad. <laughs> After being uh, walked here, you know, by everyone when uh, Pink Guy and, and the horse here are kind of revealed, Beck unholsters his gun and very calmly just says, Now, nah, against the wall. All right, what's against the wall? And he just, uh, like, presses himself against the wall excitedly, like, looking around, <laughs> see if he can find something. And... Jeremy, poor Jeremy, slumped against the wall already. He doesn't take his eyes off of Argo, but he slowly forces himself to speak up. He should have stayed. There's not mm -hmm. a whole lot left to stay in. What happened to you? Same thing that happened to... So the rest is a no. slower. Can I oh. test and see if uh, Nico's heal would work on him? Yeah, let's give that a try. Give me okay. a faith roll. See if you can act. Gonna need a lot of bees for this one. You're gonna need so many bees. This guy's gonna need a B12. I'm gonna Benny. All right. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Ooh, there you go. That's what we want. Oh my god, so many dice. So many fucking dice. All right, so as you set your hands upon him, attempting to heal his wounds, you manage to spirit away those red pustules from his body, sealing shut a few of the wounds where that black ichor is leaking. But the parts of his body that have already succumbed to decay, that have started to rot away, are still in that state. You've stabilized him for now, but as long as he remains out here, he's his, content his condition is going to continue to deteriorate. And uh, thinking back, Conrad, you realize them being indoors here might actually be slowing it down mm -hmm. a little bit. Can I use an edge creatively? Uh, yes, I love that. Tell me what you're doing with it. We're not doing a fear check right now, but can I still use Gallo's humor to assuage his fears and make him feel Ooh. better? Yeah, I like that. Which means I'm going to taunt him to buff <laughs> him. Tell him how pretty he looks. <laughs> just gonna get in there, just stroke his hair, warm. This poor, poor dying man. I'm gonna say, <laughs> they always said you were missing ribs, but I guess they were lying. I'm just trying to. <laughs> it's supposed to be a joke to make him feel better in this situation, even though it's rude. Ooh, that's that's better on the on the reroll. So. You managed to get him to crack a little bit of a smile, and he says, Don't go telling everybody about my party trick now. They gotta there he pay is. to see that. 
So Beck is looking him over, and I just did an occult roll to see. Can Beck discern if with the darkness, like how the combination of being in the shadow and Nico healing him uh, kind of affected the discorporation? Does he think the same thing could work to stitch this man back together? With that occult check, you think, no, absolutely not. The shadows too- are made of you. They protect you because you are a servant of Erebus. Uh, yeah. Protection you can't really extend to others. So he's he's completely too far gone for even service to the Lord of Hunger. Indeed. Hmm. Got two half people. Can you mix them together? All right. Now we're, <laughs> now we're getting tricky. <laughs> Simmer down, folks. Smush them up. It's the same side, though. Can I make an occult roll to see if there's anything else that would be beyond what I can currently do that would deal with uh, the part of himself that's already been rotten? <laughs> oh, shit. Sure. Give me a roll. That sneaky now flip. <laughs> now it's not the same side. <laughs> you haven't encountered anything on your travels thus far. Your experience with the occult uh, would give you any indication of how to undo this. It seems like the state of decay that this region is in, the transformation that the creatures here undergo. It's more of a one-way journey. There's no getting him back to what he used to be, but you might be able to guide his transformation into something, something else. What do you mean by that? Well, you've seen some of the other critters here, what people turn into after being exposed to the other side. It's almost like they need direction on what to become. And without that direction, they just fall to pieces like these gentlemen here. Although one of them seems it took his mind first and he ain't keen on realizing exactly what's happening to him. (laughs) We we gotta find a way to merge them. If that actually fucking happens. <laughs> got some good news and I've got some bad news is what I'm going to tell this gentleman. Beck kind of pauses for a second and says, now hold up. And he huddles with, with Nicodemus and says, I don't know what you're right thinking right now, but I reckon these two might know more than they think. Long I centaur. Should... Why do you, do you get talk? That? Why <laughs> do you say to me long anything? Oh. Sorry, that just rebooted my brain for a second. So I, need to, I need to get back into character for a moment. Um, there was, the pause was long enough. I thought you were done. <laughs> no, I was. I was thinking about what to say, and it just took me. It just took me right out of it. I'm sorry. Long everyone. centaur wore pants. Uh, no. No, this stage of decay. This is much faster, much worse than anything else we've seen so far. You saw Rick out there. Which ain't like that. And I think Beck turns around and says, Now listen here. Big white wolf here. He's a mighty fine man. I reckon he can do you two a lot of good. But before we let that happen, you're going to help me. What did you see out there? So, your canine wanderer friend is the first one to pipe up, and he says, Oh, shucks, I've seen a whole bunch of stuff. I heard a whole bunch of stuff, too. What, what are you looking for? I think... Uh- Beck is stare is is way more interested in the horse because the horse seems so much more lucid. Uh, 
but he just lets he, he doesn't really respond he just kind of looks back at him and waits for whatever anyone else might have to say yeah well, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm just, oh yeah go ahead I just wanted to say to Beck is there a way to test their character oh I'm sure there's plenty of ways to test their character that, that's up to you my friend I think I'm going to chime in and be like, have you heard of a guy called Barbados? Barbados? No! <laughs> uh, okay, then. <laughs> I just, can, I, I, can I do it? In, is, what is the equivalent of insight? Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> to see if he's lying. That sounded like a really bad lie. <laughs> I think he just that sounds sounded like, like that. a real good roll, George. Ooh, that was eleven. You discern that there is not a thought in this man's head that he is capable of concealing from you. Okay, <laughs> he's just a dumbass. Got it. Cool. <laughs> he's perfect. I think Beck is like Thanks kneeling so. in front of the horse, and he just looks back at his shoulder, uh, over his shoulder, and he kind of points his gun back up at the the pink the pink dog, and just says, "Shut up." Oh, nice gun you got there, mister. Trade? You're really pushing me, Kaw. You're really <laughs> no. pushing me. Is that a warning shot or are you shooting him? Beck is just gonna fire. Oh, uh, right. I don't know if he's gonna I don't know if he's gonna shoot at him, but <laughs> he's gonna fire. All right, you uh, you fire. Uh, do you want to hit him? Uh, I would. I do, but like, <laughs> I would. It's like getting an autograph. With, yeah, I want to problem, not want to. The problem uh, is that Beck is an extraordinarily lethal man. So mm -hmm. there's really there's no such thing as like shooting someone in the toe to make him hurt a little bit when mm -hmm. you fire and you do 13 damage on a single hit. Uh, so let's just say he shoots the hat off his head. Oh, my hat! I didn't even see the hat. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shit. So, around now. Be quiet. I'm talking to the horse. His uh, hat gets caught in the wind and starts blowing down the leviathan. He chases after it. Get back here! <laughs> like a wind tunnel. <laughs> I don't like that there's a breeze in here. <laughs> Don't smell it, good. It'd be, you that. it'd be a lot worse it's if there wasn't a reason here. Its lungs haven't died yet. So uh, after you <laughs> fire that shot, the horse reaches up with what little strength he can muster in his gooey, malformed hand, and he reaches up for your arm as if begging you to give it a rest. Oh, you want, you want to rest? Oh, I can give you rest, my friend, but not a second before you tell me what did this to you. Because I know it ain't just the light of the dream. He uh, said give it a rest, right? I'm rolling, like, I'm like rolling chill out. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> not kill yeah. me. <laughs> not give me rest, but Beck used that wordplay. I don't and like rolled that. so many sixes <laughs> Stop. in a row. Stop. Jesus. Stop Fuck. it. All right. Uh, if this man had any digestive tract left in his body, it, <laughs> he would be shitting his pants. I think Ew. I think the way this manifests is as Beck <laughs> is saying that he's like, oh, I can give you rest. It's just like he tilts. He's like looking at him in just the right way. And his whole like the shadow falls over him in such a way that he's just completely black. And the man can just see Erebus walking, pacing back and forth inside of Beck's shadow. Oh, God. Like he's looking into infinity. Oh. Speak. I don't know what did this, but it happened to everyone. We were following the lights, looking for the train. But then... <laughs> This was the last light I found. The train. Tell me more about the train. 
I know a thing or two about a train. Thinking back, you do remember that Madoska mentioned you should go catch the train. And as you ask, the horse elaborates further. We heard it in the distance, but never saw it. Didn't get close enough. Wherever we walked, we just got turned around. And you realize his party, whoever they were, probably weren't dreamwalking. They were just walking around regular. Yeah. And that's probably why they ended up like this. I don't know How what you mean. were you feeling when you heard that train? What was going through that head of yours? This guy comes back. He's like, Get <laughs> the hat! You talk about the train? You got something to say now, smart guy? Oh, yeah. I've been following that train for days or years, one of those. It, uh, it's a real neat town, and it goes like this. It goes... That's not what trains sound like. <laughs> this, but, uh, That's what this train sounds like. That, so that's a uh, nope. I was going to say, does Beck know what that is? I kind of want to spend a Benny on this. I do but. like it. You're sitting Can on I do Benny's. a survival? If it's yeah. any kind of natural sound? Yeah, give me one. So does Beck, Beck I think understand what this is? <laughs> uh, I think he's just an innocent who lost his way. Lynn, you don't know of any creature that makes that noise, at least not topside. And Noted. Beck, do you think that might be the howl of a creature that is in immense pain begging for yep. death. Hmm. I see. I think so so Beck is gonna turn around to to everyone. Gonna, this is a real puzzler. I think I think he's really frustrated about this. And he says Space doesn't work the way it does topside down here. Whatever they hear, whatever they see, doesn't mean it's right in front of them. It's like a mirage. It moves. It feels. Places here are just as living as the people that visit them. I don't think we're looking just for a train. I think we're looking for someone. That's a train. Something. That's a train. The longest horse. <laughs> Long iron horse. There we go. Ooh. I think Beck stands and looks at the pink guy and says, I think you're coming with us, partner. Say goodbye to your friend. Oh, what? Well, who's going to get him back to South Paul then? Him and his stub toe. Why do you keep saying that? Look, look at it. And he takes <laughs> Jeremy's boot off and shows you just like an absolute, like a liter of slop comes out of the boot. There's pretty much nothing below the knee anymore. It's stubbed all the hell. Oh, <sighs> I think I, I am. Oh, go on, sir. I just say, I think I want to help this man. And I think if we can get him to help ourselves, then he's not our problem anymore, right, Beck? Mm. I think Beck looks to, to Nico and says, I'm not a merciful man, but there's very little we can do for these people. Well, then what okay. fucking good are you? Tell you what he isn't. He's not a frivolous man. Am I right? You're right about that. I think Beck holsters his gun and nods to Nico and then just says, do what you want with him, but do not deny him the mercy of death if he wishes it. 
go nods. Free will is important to me, perhaps the most important thing. And I'll walk up to the horse. And I'll kneel beside him. And I'll say what I was going to say before. I've got good news and I've got bad news. What you've lost isn't coming back. But you're going in a direction. And that's a direction you can choose. And if you so choose the right direction, your body will let you go there. Give me a faith roll for Nicodemus. That's not great. And I was going to say, can Beck have helped him? Yeah, Beck uh, Be- can Because support. of that. Could Argo? Yeah. Ooh, here we go. Oh. All right. Uh, does Argo want to chime oh. in with any support? Am I, is it helping Nico? Helping, or helping Nicodemus uh, instill faith into the horse. So I'm... It's about saying something to the horse, then, not to Nico. Or is saying it, something or to am the I horse. Trying yes. to charge his powers. <laughs> uh, the, the, you are working with Nico to emotionally support this horse for the transformation, the metamorphosis that is soon to take him, helping him get into the right frame of mind to guide it, so that he doesn't just become goo. Hmm. I think what the hell the fuck to manifest that? Uh, I think I'm just gonna comfort him. I don't. I can't think of something like magic related. I don't. I guess he wouldn't anyway. Yeah, you can just support him, like stroke his hair, make sure he's comfortable as Nicodemus is delivering this speech to him. Yeah. All right. So just saying, just saying, look, just look at him and listen. I'm done losing people today. And you've learned when to cede the floor to someone else who speaks with words of wisdom greater than your own. And Nicodemus, as you impart this wisdom, you see the horse let out a deep sigh taking these words to heart and trying to envision something in his mind's eye as a fate in store for him, a new road to walk upon. And though he continues breathing, his eyes do not open again. He has succumbed to slumber for the time being. I guess it's nap time. <laughs> Uh, I wish I had like animal handling. <laughs> what? <laughs> I wish I had animal handling. What does that mean? <laughs> what do you mean. strengthen? I was gonna. I was just gonna say Beck is gonna gonna like push him hard with one hand and be like, "You're coming with us. You're gonna bring us where you heard that train." All right, well, you gonna take him back to Southpaw for me? And uh, if we want, we can actually split the party here, and someone can take him back to Southpaw astride the longest horse. I think we need to have a huddle before we decide what the hell is happening here. But yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, I think Beck is gonna relocate uh, the stranger, and I guess he's gonna help Nicodemus put the the uh horse jeremy on long horse or whatever whatever you're gonna do and then we're gonna meet up front does that sound good to everyone yeah yeah y'all need somebody to ride the long horse so i mean after what argo just said argo's probably gonna try to get jeremy back home yeah so so beck uh 
just watched Bucky dissolve. Beck has been actually pretty sincerely honest to everyone up to this point. Uh, there, he hasn't really truly uh, lied. He's maybe hidden things or left things out or not said more than needed. But at this point, he uh, he is, when prompted, essentially only told the truth. He's not really that kind of lying man. And Nicodemus has earned his respect in, I think, like, uh, has earned a place of authority to Beck that, uh, you know, very few people do in life. Nicodemus is in many ways the, the very opposite of Beck, and yet they kind of share a weird, um, similar perspective on things. Of course, Bex is more warped and selfish uh, and darker. Uh, I think in many ways he senses a kindred spirit in Nicodemus, but I think that that is also where there is a sort of schism in their goals and in the plan. And so Beck very plainly kind of huddles everyone together and just says, Listen, whatever's happening in that town, whatever pulled it down here, that buck stops with Barbados. Now, everything we're hearing here, he's, he's taking control over this place. He's turned up the lights. And now he's on a train. And all I can say is that I know how to rob a train. Some of you might want to go back, might want to regroup and help your people. And I am not here to say you can't do that. But what's going to happen to them is going to happen to them if we don't put a stop to this. Now, you all can do what you want. Except you, Conrad, you're coming with me. <laughs> I didn't assume I had a choice, but <laughs> I want to stop. Bar I want to stop stop Barbados too. I wasn't going back to the town. There's nothing for me there. Now, White Wolf, this is a rare platitude, but I trust your decision making. You do what you feel is best, but I think you hold great sway over what will come. Think on that. Very plainly, I need my horse and I need to bring the people food. I have neither right now. Are, are you doing this in earshot of uh, your new friend? Or is he left out of the huddle? I mean, he's not left out of the huddle. I think we're all just standing here. All right, at the, mouth well, at, the, at the mention of food, he uh, pats the long horse and he says, right, you can get a whole lot of food out of this, baby. Once we're done riding it. They're not eating that. <laughs> Still a horse. Don't look a gift long horse in the mouth. And as you say that out loud, he starts like sticking his fingers in between the long horse's wobbly stop, teeth. Stop, stop doing that. No. Stop. <laughs> Beck uh, you know, takes his hat off very briefly and kind of wipes his forehead and says, food. It... Listen, if I know one thing, it's hunger. I've been doing this for years. Since the day I died, since the day I stood back up, that hunger has eaten at me. I've eaten so much, eaten till I puked, ate more, and it doesn't go away. That starvation like nails drilled into my gut. It don't work that way down here. Bringing them food don't matter. If they know they're gonna starve. It comes from the inside, not from without.
So, out of character, uh, the point of going back to South Paul right now would be to drop off the goopy remains of Hog Swallow. Yep, and it sounds like possibly also look for Nico's horse. <laughs> um, I would hate my to donkey was still alive, though. maybe too. <laughs> you might be able to catch up. Uh, now that you're aware of it, uh, that makes something easier to locate in the yeah. other side. I think Beck motions to Conrad and says, I have a plan. We're just going to take some preparation. You stay back with me. We might be able to scrounge up what we need. We can't delay long. And then he turns whatever you, to... Yeah, whatever to, you think we need to, need to do, I'm in. Yeah. And then I think he turns back to Nicodemus and Lynn, and especially to Chance at this moment. He looks him in the eyes, all three of them, and he says, You've seen me walk the dream. You can do it. We'll be here when you get back. But we can only delay so long. You think you can do this quick? You've earned that much to settle your debts. Again, out of character, I don't know who all was actually planning on heading back. Well, based on what Argo just said, probably Argo, and it's in character for Nico. And I don't know if anyone else said they're going to go. I, Beck was just addressing the group, addressing yeah, the people okay. that yeah. were there. <laughs> All right, so Beck and Conrad are staying. Argo and uh, Nicodemus. I will be going. going. Okay, Lynn is going. What about Chance? Is he going to stay here with this crew or head back to town? Chance yeah. does not really look forward to the prospect of wandering this wasteland without a horse. So <laughs> yeah, that's a good he's point. Gonna, he's going to return to town on the long horse and try to find his horse. Oh, damn. That's a lot more people than I thought. <laughs> uh, in that case, uh, Beck is, when everyone is preparing to set off, Beck is not going to let go of the, the pink dog's collar. And he's just going to repeat what he said before. Sorry, partner. You're staying here with us. Stay goodbye to your friend. We got work to do. All right. Bye, Jeremy. Hope I can see your party trick sometime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, no. We're never seeing this dog again. <laughs> Beck's going to make lock picks out of his bones. No. <laughs> he barely survived five minutes with them. Hmm. That's not a great mm -hmm. stealth roll, is that? Mm -hmm -hmm. Uh, it's passable. Uh, what are you trying to do? Okay. Uh, it, it's really not that high stakes of a thing, so uh, I'll mention it off chat later. There's no All reason. Right. It, there's no reason it couldn't be successful. So. Okay. All right. All right. So it looks like the four of them are departing with uh, Jeremy Hogswallow atop a long horse. I was gonna and... say forehead and off, like mm -hmm. Len looking at Conrad. You're gonna be all right out here with him. I mean, the way I see it, this, I'm already a dead man walking. So, what if I got less, le you know, left to lose at this point? Mm. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Argo, Argo's mixed up here. He doesn't really like Conrad that much, but this feels bad. <laughs> So help a little. <laughs> so what a, what, what weaponry does Conrad have? I have a Winchester. Yeah, I've got a gonna... Winchester and a hatchet. <laughs> and some other stuff I've you don't know about. <laughs> oh. 
Agro's going to make a token effort. He's going to hand Conrad a stick of dynamite. <laughs> he's going to say, it's one second per inch, you'll figure it out. You're a smart fella. Uh, are you sure you don't need this for yourself? Oh, I've got plenty. Oh. <laughs> All right, then. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And I think Beck is, is looming and sees the dynamite and goes, good, that'll be useful. <laughs> Perfect for Robin trains. Exactly. Wonderful. Uh, while hey, everyone I'm, else is... I'm just going to... It doesn't matter at this point because now you know I have a stick of dynamite. I already have some, so I just add it to my bundle without saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Great. That's very funny. Game There's my fourth game. stick of dynamite. Let's go. Stay away from burning churches. <laughs> so, uh, as as everyone else is, you know, preparing to depart and stuff, uh, Beck is already like kneeling in the mouth of this this creature and like drawing in the sand with his finger and like basically drawing like a crude map of a of a train or you know what his concept of what a train might be here. There's like, you know, he Beck is not good at writing, but there's like a there's like, you know, little words written in the sand, like worm, question mark, but it's W-U-R-M instead of W-O-R-M and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> just like trying to puzzle out what it could be uh, and marking down like important components of of trains and like, here is a concept of what a train, what makes up a train and like what the possible things could be. Basically, Beck begins planning a heist. Uh and trying to figure out what supplies they will need and what positions they would need if they were to encounter a train here in the waste and how they would grapple with it. I'll be damned, he's a man to science. And as much as Beck has dealt with trains before and dealt with the other side before, he's never dealt with a train in the other side. That almost seems anathema to have something so technologically advanced on this side. I think Beck is fully expecting this train to be some sort of living monstrosity, much like the Leviathan we are currently in. He he is fully expecting to find a train and it is a gigantic sandworm. Like that's what his his brain is going to, but he doesn't know for sure and he's just trying to puzzle it out as he's explaining and he's going like, Conrad, come over, come over here. Let's look at this. Let me show you something. And he's just, they're going through that as the rest of the group begins to, to depart, I think. Alrighty. So the rest of y'all are heading back to Southpaw. Those of you traveling back, go ahead and give me a spirit roll or a vigor roll if you're partaking in some particulars. I'm going to use a bitty. <laughs> damn. <sighs> With him gone, god damn. It's, forgot what it was like to breathe. That is a success for all four of you. Argo's you chalking to... his success entirely to Beck's absence. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, a lot easier to get your head straight without the threat of him looming over you. Uh, the clear and present danger at every step. What the fuck are my rolls? <laughs> <laughs> We've all There's been rolling real good today. To stop. We're going to get to the finale and roll crit fails every every dice roll to get back from this karmically. Hey, roll my crit I'm fail. looking forward to it. It was a fun one. Yeah, it was go. fun. It was great. I think, like, as we're writing, um, Lynn just kind of looks back. Y'all got plans on fighting your horses? Got a lot of wild to cover here. <laughs> yeah, a horse. We found hair tracks back at the barn, so we should start there. But uh, I think I want to check on my hives to gather some honey. I just had the cursed idea that if we all f crit failed in the final encounter and met with a horrible fate, then we're just the villains of Cape Escape Season 2. 
<laughs> all right so y'all head on back into town managed to make it there fine you want to head into south paul proper first or head up to nicodemus's residence to check on the hives first the hives i'd like to put long horse in the stable so people don't have to experience long horse Putting long horse in the stable is so fucking mean. That's like a 75 point turn to get back out. (laughs) (laughs) He like curls up like a snake. He's oh no, he lays down. Yeah, get to the little pile. He goes full Uzumaki. Uh, he just there's (laughs) spirals in your ear. Uh, We're just gonna find long horse in the bottom of a little wooden tub. Oh no! All right, you oh, put this like, away. Good, good, good boy. Pat, pat. I clicked something by mistake. It makes that weird stuttering whinny again. That just makes your blood curdle. This thing shouldn't uh-huh. be. Don't, don't go anywhere. Okay. You're not sure it could if it tried, really. Especially curled <laughs> up like this, it might need manual help to uncurl itself first. Don't like it. We'll worry about that when we get there. (laughs) All right. You taking care of one horse? You want to take care of the other one? Do some tracking. Are we just going to deposit him downstairs? I mean, what else? (laughs) Well, is there a graveyard in town? Like, okay. What? Uh, it was attached <laughs> to the church around the back of it. Uh, there's a lot of battle damage back there now, but yeah, there's kind of a graveyard. So you praying, man? Is he? <laughs> uh, give me common knowledge check for Argo. Did you? Do... That's not a good roll. Let's find out. Uh? Ooh. Uh? Stop exploding. Uh, no. You remember in a particular lecture when he was explaining the origins of his name from the Hogs Wallow village back in no. England that uh, they they were a Catholic clan, his family that came over. And he still liked to think that there was some kind of God watching out for him, but didn't quite agree with some of the tenets that people tend to to attribute to him. Uh, so graveyard good or bad for morale? <laughs> <laughs> good question. Uh, Do you want to wake up in a graveyard when you're dying? No, I don't. I don't love that idea. <laughs> I, I mean, is he still conscious at this point? Oh no, he's been unconscious. He's been he unconscious, the, but he's not been dead. <laughs> He should probably somewhere be safe but solitary. I wouldn't put him with others. Yeah, I feel like I should take him to my bed. But I'm not that's there. That's where everyone else is, isn't no. it? No, well, there everyone else is in that. They're in the bunker. In the right? bunker. That's where he'd be safe. Yeah. yeah. And uh, but we, you, you all where, do, where does Argo live? I mean, Lin saw. <laughs> <laughs> That is not away from other people. Yeah, if it's a, if it's in the bunker, you shouldn't. You we shouldn't. have plenty of buildings to choose from here to give him. Go on, we can spot the rest. You want to take him back to the Mind's Eye Gazette? Sure. Uh, I'm trying to think of where we've been. Yeah, I'm probably not the conspiracy room. Probably not the prison. Fuck. When uh, when Chance was searching the town for the pillows, did he see any trap doors or cellars or anything? Nah, most of the people out here don't have cellars. As far as you're aware, the, either the church and or Mortadellas were probably the only places that actually had basements, proper basements. I Land here I ain't didn't exactly see the one in the church when I looked. Yeah, you you think it it would be big enough to have one, but you didn't see one there. Got it. But we know this, the Mind's Eye Gazette is secure. It is secure uh, and vacant as far as you know. The only one here was Kit and uh, 
good old goblin friend and they're yeah. out of the picture now. I guess the uh we don't have germ theory, but there is the worry that if he changes he might be a threat. Yeah, that's definitely a Which worry I since hope uh, not. Rick Ryder turned into a threat after he changed. But he always sucked. <laughs> that's true. That that just be his inner Rick coming to the surface. Doesn't look like there's much of Jeremy to transform. Is there anything comfortable in this horrible paper room? Uh, there's a there's a couple chairs. There's some bins that got paper in them and with little wheels on them. You can push around. You put them in a bin. <laughs> put them in a bin. Put them in a bin. Put them in a bin. I guess I'm trying to be nice to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that or shallow grave. Fuck. The paper is pretty soft, so it should oh, yeah. be a good nesting area. Yeah, yeah, let's this. let's try to to fit him in a bin. And as you lower him into the bin, you notice that the ichor seeping from him starts to spread out across the pages like ink being drawn upon it, spiraling into intricate patterns that are actually kind of beautiful. I don't know if that's good or bad. Uh, yeah, can we like check from what we've seen at this point to see if that is a good or bad thing? <laughs> yeah, you can give me an occult roll if you know it. If you don't know it, that's a d4 minus two. I don't. I'm not. Even, not even going to pretend Argo has a chance at knowing what's going on. <laughs> uh, Nicodemus, you do notice if this looks like a way of de-stressing it look looking at his face it looks like a pleased sign of relief has come over him as the ichor is draining from him and spreading across the paper almost like he's getting the evil out of him he's gonna mm. become a pretty picture oh i say that's a sign of de divine de geometry yeah you could call it that Sacred geometry, wherever you like to see it. The hell is geometry? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can ask you're lucky, Kit. He, he you're lucky Conrad's. Bubbles. You're lucky Conrad's not there to give you like a <laughs> ten minute explanation. No. <laughs> Argo's feeling real I, helpless. Is that's that's not a feeling he likes at all. So he's gonna grab uh, just, Jeremy's good hand. Is gonna put the, this. He's putting this watch in it. He's a he's relinquishing his uh, gold pocket watch mm. has the letters CJ scratched into it he puts it up to his heart just sort of setting him at rest gonna get through this and that's all he knows that's it that's all he has that's, all, that's the level of contribution Argo has in this bizarre fucking unprecedented situation I whisper to Lynn it's math just kind of shudders we hate that <laughs> math isn't real <laughs> it's just made up I think this oh. is the most we can do for him at the moment. There's approximately half of a horse laying in a paper bin full of ink blood, clutching a gold pocket watch to his chest. And, well, <laughs> we'll see how he feels when he wakes up. Well, we won't be here, but... Sleep it off, champ. He'll recognize it. Might need to uh, inform the others to avoid this area at the moment good idea hopefully they're staying downstairs like we told them well you haven't seen anyone out in town on the streets or in the the building's top side on your way in here so that's either a good, good sign or a very bad sign i say I don't, I don't think they'll be waking up anytime soon or i don't think he'll be waking up anytime soon so why don't we just go back to my place and get our stuff and then we can just drop it off and tell them then Sounds good. Watch. Sounds like a plan. All right. Well, with that, this uh, this collection of people is gonna head on out of Southpaw, down to Nicodemus's place to check on the hives. One Meanwhile, dynamite. There we go. <laughs> uh, I already took the dynamite off oh, fuck. and gave it to Conrad. So. All right. Well, I I got rid of the watch. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So uh, we're going to cut back to Beck and Conrad, back over at the Leviathan. 
So let me get my Leviathan out. Back at the Leviathan. Beck and Conrad are going over their train robin plans while, uh... It looks like, uh, your pink dog friend here has, uh... Thankfully had something tied around his muzzle to keep it shut so he doesn't get on Beck's nerves. That might have saved his life right there. <laughs> Beck uh, I'm like, I'm, like, I'm looking in his direction and, like, putting a finger up to my beak, like, you know, hinting to, like, whisper, stay quiet, but also giving him, like, an encouraging thumbs up, like, you're doing a good job being quiet. Very good. He gives you a, a thumbs up back and his thumb kind of just melts back into his hand. <laughs> it's not a good look. But uh, give me a notice check for the two of you. Yep. Ooh. I still got Benny's. Very good. Are we getting? Are we getting? Well, Oof. Well, I'm gonna. I'm going to Benny that. Yep. Uh. God, I suck. God, I <laughs> suck so hard. Uh, <laughs> is it worth a Benny? It's worth a Benny. Oh, oops. I added one. I'll take another one. The dice then, can bring uh, even demigods to their knees. It's true. Where, where is it? Sorry, I have to find If you stat it, they will kill it. God, motherfucker! <laughs> All right, so this uh, sort of passes back by, but Conrad, you hear something in the distance. It sounds vaguely like the whistle of a train, but it also sounds a little bit like... <laughs> And uh, your uh, your old pink dog friend like jumps up and like points eagerly at the source of the sound, but he knows better than open his mouth right now. I think at this point, like the kind of the feathers kind of like fluff on the back of my neck, just kind of like that hair is rising, like it's, it's giving me goosebumps in a way. Um, that's it. I heard it back. There's the you train. Heard it. Mm. How'd it make you feel? It was like... It felt like someone was watching me. Oh. Oppression. I see. I think, uh... How much, like, subjective time has passed, Ka? Is, ha have we had time to, like, go over any plans, to look at anything, to try to do stuff, or are we... I think you've had a little bit of time. It, it feels like it's been about an hour from your perspective. Okay. Um. Can I make some kind of roll to determine if we need to move now or if we can delay more? Uh, yeah. Give me an occult roll. Okay. You get the feeling that no, it's not necessarily now or never. You might be able to find this thing again, but this might be your only opportunity in the near future. It might take a while to locate this train if you don't go after it right now. Beck, like, kicks the drawing on the ground to, like, write over it and uh, to, like, to, like, clear the slate. And in... In the sand. He, so he looks to Connor and he goes, You know how to write words, I mean? Yes, of course. Describe the exact feeling that train made you feel as accurately as you can in the sand here. When the others get back, they'll need it to find their way. Okay. So at this point, I'll sit down and just kind of start writing in the sand, I guess. Okay. And I think once uh, once Conrad is, you know, done with that, Be Beck can read. It's just slowly. He has, like, the reading level of, like, a probably, like, a third grader in, like, modern times. Uh, he, he has the writing equivalent of hunting and pecking. It takes him a bit. He, yes, exactly. Uh, he doesn't have lines to write on. How are you supposed to... He writes in all capitals, and they're very oh, no, long. That's me. <laughs> uh, and Boomer then, texting. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, he he he's gonna he's gonna grab the the pink dog, the nameless dog, and he's going to kind of look at both him and Conrad, and he's gonna say, "That feeling, 
That feeling of being watched, being pursued, of something big hunting you. Think about that as we walk. Focus on that. We'll find our way. This is not a place of pass. It's a place of ideas. That's how we find that train. And then he begins, uh, I guess, walking out into the, uh, out of the mouth of the, the Leviathan towards the train. Okay, so I have a question uh-huh. for Ka. Yeah. Hindrances. Uh huh. <laughs> I know they're supposed to be hindrances. Uh, can I use one to my benefit? Uh, situationally, yeah. Tell me what you're trying to get out of this. Minor secret. Uh, mm-hmm. You know his backstory. Mm-hmm. Uh, Conrad, has, without saying too much, he's been afraid of something that might, from his past, that might catch up with him. Mm-hmm. So he knows the feeling all too well of something that might find him. Yeah. And so that is a very easy emotion for him to tap into. Yeah, I'm going to give you a bonus on your spirit or vigor roll for this. Okay. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. And yeah, I, I suppose I'll roll um, vigor. Do I still have the bonus from eating the root? Um, no, that was uh, essentially okay, just for that one, one travel's time. worth. Okay. I guess we can use the logic of rolling vigor is that I ate the root and a mushroom. So this is just like making sure my system's still kind of good. Yeah. <laughs> in addition. Okay. Uh... Oh. Four is what you needed. You want to give us another try at that, Beck, or are you going to sit on it? Uh, do I have another? Thing oh, shit, use? you're out. Yeah. Ooh, boy. I, I don't know. Is there... I It says I can free reroll. Do I have anything that lets me reroll this? Let me check. Uh, it always says free just in case you have it, because it can't really check. Okay. Um, I don't think you have any edges that would let you free reroll that, though. Let me double check. Uh... Let's get spirit roll nope. from our wanderer friend. Well, well. <laughs> OK, he did not crit fail, <laughs> <laughs> but he did roll. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's bad. He rolled a one. Brutal. For those that, are, that aren't in the know, uh, extras characters that aren't uh, wild cards or whatever, they roll one dice. Yep. Mm hmm. All right. So as you're walking back out into the waste, Conrad, you're you're feeling your mind opened to the possibilities and you know the exact kind of mentality to latch on to to get you where you need to go. It's the, uh, the same feeling that's, you know, caused me to have trouble sleeping for the last couple of years. Oh, absolutely. And Beck, speaking of sleeping, Mm. You got trouble sleeping as well. And as you try and put yourself into that liminal space between wakefulness and dreams, you push a little too far. You go a little too deep into dreaming and you find yourself overtaken with those night terrors that Mm. lash out at you and make you scream in your head. I think the way this looks is, you know, as Beck is tapping into that that kind of primordial darkness, that dark place that he walks in, uh, his connection with Erebus, he pushes too hard into it. And uh, like was mentioned in the past, uh, Beck and Erebus have a kind of parasitic symbiotic relationship. But in as much as Beck likes to think that he can call upon Erebus whenever he wants, Erebus is the one that is in charge here. And that encroaching upon something, that seeking something that may be hunting him, as he closes his eyes and sees only darkness, he hears the growling of the tiger skulking behind him. He hears it moving in the darkness in front of him. He sees those yellow eyes open in the darkness, ready to pounce. And he wakes up in the moment and, uh, and is, is lost in the dream sea for, for a moment, whether, you know, whatever it, it does to him. 
it gives you one point of fatigue. Mm. You feel the hunger gnawing at you. You feel the tired ache in your bones. But you manage to get a grip on yourself. You're not done yet. The Wanderer, however, you notice as you snap to lucidity for a moment that he steps a little bit funny. He steps wrong, almost like he's stepping on a twig. And he says, whoops, and he melts. What? God No. Damn he's too stupid. He melts? What do you he mean melted. he melts? He, he's he melted. never known a moment of lucidity in his life. Oh, that's true. It's like cotton candy and water. No! no. no. Oh my god. There, there's what a mess of image. A puddle of that black ichor where he used to be. And I'm going to say that. Oh. I'm going to say that Conrad doesn't even notice that happening uh, just because I'm so like in tune to just going towards this emotion. Damn. Conrad just keeps on moving. The party keeps on moving. All that's left is the area squeeze. Yep. And two of you arrive at a strange looking bridge. After trekking across one impossible landscape after another, you eventually find yourself standing before the strangest bridge you ever did see. It snakes a trail over a distant ravine before ascending sharply up into the sky beyond. Beneath it, it's laid out a set of train tracks with no visible supports, standing defiant against gravity, hundreds of feet above the eiker filled ravine below. Nico saved the fuck out of Jeremy. Mm hmm. Beck. Does Beck see anything on the trail, tr uh, on the train tracks? Give me a notice it for Beck. He'd be looking for signs of a train having come or uh, coming soon. Ooh, there we that. go. Yeah, in the distance, you can hear it. Mm. I'm scared. Oh, we got train music? We got train music. I'm so scared what it looks like. How in do the you distance. do with heights, bird? <laughs> Oh no, that's uh, I'm okay. I'm okay with heights. Good. I think Beck kind of begins to walk down the bridge, squaring away so that he uh, he begins to hover over where the tracks are. There's only one way onto the train, then. We're gonna have to jump. Okay. Beck is just in position waiting. He knows it's going to be a countdown. It's going to be a while before it gets here if they only just heard it. So he's squaring up just like he's always done. Uh, I'm right there with you, ready to go. I think uh, I think Beck is is kind of smirking and just goes, uh, oh, there is a, this reminds me of a time. This reminds me of a time I did this once with one of my old partners. There's a, a Gila monster named, uh, named Lassa. She suggested we blow the train off the tracks. Can you believe that? I mean, it doesn't seem like a bad idea to me completely, depending on the situation. I think Beck kind of cocks an eyebrow and looks up to Conrad and goes... God damn, you are crazy. <laughs> I just don't I even knew. react to that. <laughs> I knew you had a killer inside you. That kind of ruthlessness, that ain't normal, kid. You're kind of messed up, ain't you? <laughs> and he just laughs and pats his, uh, pats Conrad on the shoulder as he stands up and goes, we're gonna do it your way if you want to. Well, I've got dynamite, but I trust that you have better instinct. So if you think we should hop on the train, I'll follow your lead. If you want to pull it off the tracks, we can do that too. Here's what I have to say. 
I've been inside many of a train. Let me tell you, it's best to get in if they don't know you're there. But them's topside rules. You think chaos is the best bet here, well, who am I to argue? This place is chaos. Go with your gut, bird. You're the one who got us here anyway. This is where the visual novel route split pops on screen, blow up train, <laughs> or jump on train. <laughs> I think uh, Beck <laughs> Beck lights one of his cigars that he has in his inventory and begins smoking it and then passes it to Conrad and says, Light the fuse if you want. It's up to you, kid. So... Uh, I've got four sticks of dynamite. Mm-hmm. I feel like to blow up the track and have it. Hmm. We know you said it's defying gravity, but I feel like if we the so I'm not blowing up like a support column, probably more like the track itself, mm-hmm. uh, just to make it come apart. How much dynamite do you think that would need, Ka? Science roll. Okay. I have four sticks total. My inventory throw shows three, Whoa. but... All right. You, you think it's going to take all the dynamite you got to blow up this section of track? That's kind of what I was thinking. Uh, and I have a couple extra fuses to make the fuse a bit longer to give us some time to run the hell away. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to use up my two fuses as well. You guys get bonuses to stat checks? That's fucked up. All right. <laughs> Now, either way, we're going to need to jump off this bridge at some point. Either we get on the train or we get down. But I don't want to cross that lake, so... I got a lot of rope. Whatever you do, you do. We're going to need to scurry down after you blow it. And we're going to need to be quick about it. You think you can do that, Conrad? I think we got this. Cigar business, yeah. I think Beck, Beck, and Conrad are one hundred percent just smoking cigars together right now <laughs> on top of the train. Oh, Beck, they're pulls, bonding. Beck pulls the cigar off, uh, out of his mouth and goes to toast, like goes to cheers his cigar with Conrad, and says, <laughs> "You do the honor, little man. I like watching you work." Okay, so I'm gonna roll another another science roll. Uh huh. Um, that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. What I'm trying to do is time the dynamite, uh, Ooh. because I don't know the nature of this train creature thing entirely. So my goal is to not blow it up too soon that it might have a chance to react and maybe even reverse. So okay. I'm timing this thing to knock it off the track right as it's passing, basically. All right. So you do you want it to blow the track out from beneath it, like right as it's approaching, or do you want to catch it in the blast? Um... I'm not trying to catch it in the blast too much, but just so it doesn't have enough time to react. Okay. Yeah, then you can definitely uh, time that out based on the speed you see it approaching at. And you can see it in the distance, starting to make out that silhouette in the stay, dream scene. Stay low. Them conductors, they got good eyesight. They could see us on this bridge if we stand too tall. <laughs> <laughs> Can we roll? Do we need to roll stealth or anything? Uh, sure. Give me a stealth roll. Oh, hell yeah. Oh my god, stop it. Conrad's Whoa, so calm small. Calm down. Ah, uh, Darkwing Duck over here. Too soon. We got this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, how, how's that? how's that train coming along? Oh, it's coming. It's coming, think all right. It's pretty quick. It's coming up on us. Okay, yeah. so I, I'm gonna take my cigar and light that fuse, and we're gonna I'm gonna follow Beck's lead to you know yeah. where where we're running down to. So cigar. just really really quickly, uh, you know, while while he's doing this, uh, Beck has basically uh, has basically taken uh, you know whatever he he has 
uh, like the the bolas in his inventory and basically just made like uh, as quick and dirty a, a, a string like a rope that they can uh, they can basically ride down as they would like jump off the bridge uh, just as guidance to get down um, so I'll just I'm gonna remove those from my inventory I dig there it there you go all three of them are done uh, and uh, basically he's just like holding one end of it or we can just imagine like the three of them are like tied together and then Beck and Conrad just kind of are, are holding onto it like a like a tug of uh, tug of war rope and uh, and yeah, Beck just says, "The second that goes, we're gonna need to jump." Oh, uh, just to interject here a little bit too. Uh, mm-hmm. Gurgle's been at my side this whole time. Oh yeah, <laughs> just hanging out. Okay, kind of looks like he's curious about uh, the cigar, but it's not toes. Okay, well, <laughs> does a little guy want a cigar? <laughs> he's, he's, so I, I, he'd I, take it if you gave him one. I. I I'm gonna let Why him know. Uh, yeah. Beck probably gave him a cigar too. All right, he eats it. Yeah, Beck. Beck is not a good influence to anyone. He's at nine <laughs> Excellent. cigars. Excellent. Oh no, yeah, no. So we're good. Yeah. So Gur- Gurgle's tagging along. Okay, we're good. All right. Uh, Gurgle's not very fond of the cigar. Doesn't have that same je ne sais quoi of a good toe. You I don't want You'll oh, yeah, to like it when you're older. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot he was still there. Yeah. yeah. How is Beck not a good influence on anyone? He's making Argo a better man. Yeah, out of spite. <laughs> so we—I don't think we Beck fully. Spec- I don't think we fully specified this earlier, but I'm assuming Beck w- was holding onto the foot when he traded the long horse. Yeah, yeah. I know it's Conrad. In it's it's in, it's in his in path. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Conrad would have argued for its possession as well. So okay, so that's good. Yeah. All right. So you set the dynamite down, you get that wick burning, you get into position to take refuge once this blast goes off. And as you see the train approaching, the entire track begins to bounce and sway to an unusual rhythm. Now that this train of thought draws closer, it's horrible visage inviting you to hop aboard. (laughs) Oh my God. The boy, howdy. (laughs) (laughs) Drives me, Sora. Beck is uh, Beck is laughing and seems, I think, you know, for anyone in earshot, for Conrad, Beck looks like he's having the most fun he has had in twenty years. All right, give me some athletics checks. This is truly awful, and I love it. <laughs> Why did I minus one on that? His ass is not looking where he's uh, going. Because you're fatigued. Oh, fatigued. Okay. Geronimo. I thought it was going to be like a toe spider or something. This fucking goblin, man. Yeah. I think does this train have toes? Turtle's good. Uh, the train does not have toes. It's was unfortunate. Was Gurkle able to retrieve any toes from the puddle? <laughs> No, uh, no. <laughs> I don't know. It's full puddle. No. Except for the toes. All we do is All waste right. toes today. Uh, as you uh, take refuge off the side, uh, repelling down, it sounds like, the blast goes off, annihilating a section of the track. And as it explodes, the track it is supporting begins to cascade downwards like you've knocked out a patch of gravel in Minecraft or something. And as it does, the train goes down that slope. The boy Howdy derailing and crashing down into the desert beneath. And that's where we're going to end for tonight. I really should have expected a public domain joke in this campaign. (laughs) 